A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Farm Kenya Show. I'm Nokip Kimboy. And today we have quite an interesting discussion. And this touches on healthy living because as time goes by, we are realizing more than ever before that we are what we eat. Uh, so a lot of people are adopting better ways of feeding themselves and where to source their food from. We're talking about organic food market and consumption on today's episode. And we'll be having quite an interesting discussion with practitioners. First of all, those people who've walked this journey to tell us what exactly is organic food. How do you organize a market for organic feed and lastly the consumption bit of it also how can you be onboarded on this particular journey so that you are eating healthier because we are what we eat so today get ready if you are the type to write notes it's time to get that notebook out because we'll be having quite interesting discussion of course in studio i have mr dennis and i who's the co-founder of organic market current and uh his experience, his journey, what inspired finding or founding rather this particular market. It will be interesting to know that and how the market has grown, especially the optic of organic foods in Nairobi and in Kenya in general. He'll be giving us insights at the same time. Instead, we have Gregory Kimani, who is the executive director, City Shamba. And Gregory is actually an organic farmer. In fact, interesting fact. The king has been to his farm. That is the king from the UK. So uh, he is quite formidable when it comes to proper ways of doing organic farming. And also as a farmer, where do you source your markets from? How, you, how can you make sure that your products are up to standard to be able to be taken up by these organic food markets and are also you able to make a living from the farming? So we'll have quite an interesting discussion in that regard. And later on, we'll show you organic food, especially matters to do with uh, sourdough bread. It sounds interesting, I know. I can't wait to actually meet that sourdough bread. So we'll have a discussion in that regard. We'll have uh, Alfonso Njuguna, who's a chef uh, at Rosal for Bakery, just giving us insights on how you, at your home, you can utilize the ingredients you have and products from the organic market to be able to make an organic meal. Well, that's our show in brief today. Thank you very much. As we start this journey, we will transition softly to news. Now, starting us off, President William Ruto made an impromptu visit to NCPB Eldoret Depot, where he directed the management of NCPB across the country to speed up the distribution of subsidized fertilizer. The president further noted that fraudsters selling fake fertilizer will be prosecuted. This comes shortly after detectives summoned several officials from government agencies responsible for handling the distribution of fertilizer. Reports of unsuspecting farmers falling prey to unscrupulous business persons selling fake fertilizers and seeds have left farmers agitated and counting losses. Kakamega Digital. President William Ruto issuing a stern warning to those taking advantage of the program. We are also going to make sure that those who sell fake seeds or fake fertilizer face the music that they deserve. We have arrested some of the characters who want to take advantage of our fertilizer supply uh, program. And we have already many more who are already facing court because we must eliminate corruption. We must deal with those who want to sabotage our fertilizer program firmly, effectively, and conclusively. 
reducing the cost of fertilizer to increase farm yields was one of his pre-election promises and the alleged fake fertilizers and seeds flooding the market could taint the initiative the farmers now clinging on to his assurance of dealing with the rock business people thank you so much speaking during the kakamega international trade conference the head of state tipped the counties to be the next frontiers of investment given most crucial functions are already revolved this is the time that you want to showcase what kakamega has in terms of agriculture value chains in terms of dairy value chains poultry value chains we have opportunities in health we are looking forward to seeing our level six hospital are being completed equipped and operationalized so that is an opportunity to our investors counties under the lake region economic block lreb according to the county chiefs account for 40 percent of the country's population and have a significant contribution to the economy the lake region economic block has 40 million 40 percent of the kenyan population and contributes to almost 50 percent of the kenyan economy the overall objective of the block is to leverage economies of scale and shared resources in order to grow the economy of the region and improve the livelihoods of our people. In showcasing the rich and exploited potential, leaders from the 14 counties said should the ideas be harnessed, then job opportunities will be created. So there's been a lot of um, rural urban migration and the population has really grown tremendously. So this commodity is not really adequate and that's why I've mentioned that we really need to do a lot of investment in enhancing our production facility to get a lot of water to be able to supply. President Ruto terming the conference as a template for African heads of states. Uh, now let's talk card. Mira farmers have said they will boycott harvesting the crop for seven days if the government does not address their grievances, claiming that cartels have taken control of the sector. The farmers say their prices have drastically dropped from when the government licensed only six companies to transport the crop to Somalia, Clement Masombo has more. Trouble is brewing in the Mira sector, with farmers threatening to go on a seven-day strike on harvesting the crop, claiming that the sector has been infiltrated by cartels. The farmers now say if the government will not intervene to address their grievances, they will be forced to boycott harvesting. For the next seven days, to Mesemba Atuta Katamira, Mpaka Uyo Katel, Atoke, Akufe, Ama Akuya Lunwe Mira Mwenyewe. According to farmers, some of the issues they want addressed include some of the regulations imposed by the government, which they say have denied them freedom of accessing the market. The government introduced regulations that allowed only six companies to trade the crop internationally and also banned transportation of the crop to Somalia by road. Our prayer, Your Excellency, is this. Expand the licensing portfolio. Dismantle the monopoly of only air transport. Let transportation be by air, by sea, by foot for our people to benefit from this. <laughs> However, a section of leaders from Meru are opposed to the boycott, saying it will cause more damage to farmers. Pia nasi ni wakulima wa mea. Na kwa kama sisi ni wakulima wa mea. Lazima tuchunge miraa yetu. Na kwa hivyo ndiyo maana tunawambia ile kelele ambayo munasikia kule inje, iyo kelele musizingatie. The future of the miraa trend and business is in value and vision. Miraa export, kama itaendelea kuna wiri na kuwa, we must accept the international standards that manage food hygiene in the world and it's not only kenya kenya lost its mirror international market in 2014 after the crop was banned in britain and netherlands the major international market remaining is somalia we must make sure that 
just like avocado ama mangoes unaenda unakuta sinapatiwa vizuri sinasainiwa certification inaenda kule sokoni ya uko nje kama imekaguliwa na imepewa certificate ya kwamba is fit for human consumption that is the way mira is going to be done climate masombo ktn news now uh, the ministry of agriculture has denied supplying fake fertilizer under the subsidized fertilizer program stating that the complaints being raised are only for substandard fertilizer speaking when he appeared before the national assembly agriculture uh, committee agriculture cs mythical interior was at pains to explain how the fake fertilizer found its way into the hands of farmers in the country as KTN's political affairs reporter Emmanuel Turner explains, President William Ruto says heads will start to roll concerning the scandal. Another day to try and make sense of the fake fertilizer scandal under the government's subsidized fertilizer program. Someone, uh, Tuesday, the CS for Agriculture Medical Inturi, alongside the managing directors of the National Cereals and Produce Board, NCPB, and the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Services, KEFIS, appeared before the National Assembly Agriculture Committee. The trio sticking to their guns that claims of fake fertilizer were just fertile imaginations. What does KEFIS say about some of these products and go for two years? Yes, we appreciate it. It was done in the other administration. But this administration has also distributed this product for one and a half years. We do not have fertilizer that you would say is fake. What care has failed is the standard. The, st the standard set out in the Kenyan market is what they have failed by producing a fertilizer that has a deficient or plus or minus three of the standard. If the nutrients were below, and that was substandard, substandard, not fake. But if there were no nutrients, there were zero, that would be fake. The map of quality we received uh, from the supplier, 51 Capital African Diatomite, uh, through a letter which I received in my office on 12th of March 2022, there was a certification which I would gladly uh, give a copy, which is what we utilized uh, to sign the contract. And even when a sample bag among the consignment in question was opened before the committee and was found to be fake. This is the product that, e, that SCPB has been distributing. The, the, the thousands of metric tons you are talking about are for this product. The bag that is in front of us, chair, is not in our subsidy program. I have sent we have not spent money. I also want to see it, uh, Zainabu, because this is the first time um, I am seeing it. And as the members of parliament grapple to understand the difference between fake and substandard, farmers continue to feel the pinch. Nikafungua mbolea, nikapata kweri ni mawe. Nikajota maji, nikaweka kwa sani, nikamwagilia maji. Sasa ni rangi inatoka lakini mbole yote inapagi ni mawe. Tafazali morutize pesa zetu, alafu tuchue na amu natuleza kupata mbole. This is not the fertilizer that we are distributing within the subsidy program. Kuna wakati wakuchukua hama gunia, kuna wakati wakupanda, kwa hiyo wakati huu wote waliofanya ni sharti serikali hii ya rais ruto iweze kwa lipa. The contradictions did not end there as the CS dismissed statements by Deputy President Rigari Gashagwa that about 50,000 bags of fertilizer were fake. We have imported over 4 million bags of fertilizer. So only 50,000 we got a crooked supply. There were figures you hear out there from anyone with the content that they deserve. The true position of the number of bags of fertilizer that were the batch that did not meet the standard yeah, the standard is 3,000 bags and as the back and forth continued in parliament president william ruto who made an impromptu stop at ncpb eldoret promised to crack the whip soon in regard to the fertilizers come <laughs> kwa sababu watakati mtu wachukue nafasi ya kuharibu hii kazi nzuri wakulima wanafanya Emmanuel To KT News Nairobi
All right, definitely. Today we are focusing on organic food market and consumption. And in studio we have Dennis and I, co-founder of Organic Market Current, and Ger uh, Gregory Kimani, Executive Director, City Shamba. Uh, Dennis, uh, good to see you. First of all, I think we were sinking uh, spiritually <laughs> in, a, in a way. Look mm -hmm. at our dressing, man, you know. Yeah, uh, cool. Gregory. Next time, pray, you know, before coming for the show. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, uh, Dennis, thank you very much. Thank you. For much. starters, uh, organic, uh, anything organic, for me it seems very recent. But um, I'm told when we go back, our ancestors, when there were no chemicals and fertilizer, that was the situation. Then we reached commercialization. And now again, we are trying to produce organic. So when you talk about organic foods, what do we mean? Um, so thanks, Noah. Um, when I've been in the space for probably the last 14 years. Um, and I wasn't an expert mm. in when it comes to matters food. Forget about organic or conventional or whatever. But um, I, I got into the space because of my own health challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, in the year 2010, I developed an autoimmune disease. And um, in the process of doing a lot of research around it, I came across a line through a book that I was reading that said I could manage my autoimmune disease mm -hmm. by eating organic. Mm -hmm. So as an adult, I asked myself, what is organic? Mm -hmm. And um, it sounds very simple, and it should be actually very simple. Yes. But then I, I went a bit deeper. I wanted to, to dig further and understand because markets are all over. Yes. Um, uh, and this produce, so by then, my girlfriend, you know, when, when, it, when it was time for me to transition and start eating food because I was on liquid medicated diet, mm -hmm. I told her, please go out there and bring organic produce. Mm -hmm. And she came back and said, I couldn't come with anything because there was no connection between the produce okay. and what you're trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I decided that I was going to become a farmer. And I started producing food with selfish interest for my own consumption okay. for my own health mm -hmm. so in the process i went through a lot of leafy green you know things that would take about three to four weeks and and now i'm looping in the organic because it, okay. it, it, it's a situation where i just wanted to produce food the way nature intended all right as it's supposed to be you know okay. and for me it was very simple mm -hmm. feeding the soil okay. and letting the soil feed the plant Beautiful. Yeah. I like, I like that tagline, and I'm going to come to you, Gregory, uh, shortly. But feeding the soil and let the soil... Feed the plants. Feed the plant. Pretty simple. And that's where, actually, some of these questions we're trying to answer on our segment, Farm Guide. Uh, question is, sometimes you are like Dennis here. Uh, you're, you're supposed to eat healthy. You've been asked maybe by the doctor or based on your health situation. And you're asking yourself, okay, uh, how will I get this food that is being recommended? How sure am I that the things that are, that are being omitted from my diet actually are uh, omitted from this food that is on my table? So this farm to plate situation, can you be able to trace where your food is coming from? These are some of the questions that we are answering on today's segment of Farm Guide. As more Kenyans continue to embrace a healthy eating culture, these questions can linger in your mind from time to time. And sometimes you may not have the solution due to limited time from your busy day-to-day -day schedule. Currently, we have more consumers in need of organic produce, but limited access to markets, restaurants and shops. Martin Joroge from the Kenya Organic Agricultural Network. The challenge with Kenya is that we don't have a regulation that protects consumers from anybody purporting to be organic. You can go and call your business organic herbs and spices, but there's nobody who will come and put you accountable and tell you, okay, where are the certifications? Who are these farmers you're sourcing from? What are these additives you're putting in the product? Are they all organic? So we don't have that level of accountability or guarantee. But for the Kilimohai mark, we are anchoring it on the East Africa organic product standards. There's a procedure, there's a 
there's a whole framework mechanism that makes sure that whatever product is labeled Kilimohai organic, it's actually been grown in an organic manner. It has been handled in an organic way and there are no contaminations. When you eat organic produce, you are eating natural food. You are eating the food the way that God planned food to be grown. So that food is, is full of uh, essential um, amino acids, you know, vitamins, and is rich in, in, in terms of nutrition of value. That's one and most important uh, advantage of organic food because it has been grown naturally. You know, there's no input, like you are hastening that process by, you know, pumping in, like for example, people who put urea so that the crop can grow very fast. The price of organic food is generally higher than that of conventionally grown food, depending on the product, the season, and the vagaries of supply and demand. So, what benefits do farmers get from the certification? A lot of farmers are gaining confidence in marketing their products Kilimohai organic. One of the big challenges you find, especially in Kenya, is that most of the farmers are exploited by middlemen because they don't have places to sell their products. So you find with organic farmers, they are still finding that challenge because not everybody recognizes organic. But when they come and say Kilimohai organic and they are able to show that they are certified under that, their products get reception because they have a partner that is the Kenya Organic Agriculture Network that is open and willing to vouch for them with regard to such a standard. Compared with conventional agriculture where synthetic fertilizers and pesticides are used, organic farming uses fewer pesticides, reduces soil erosion, decreases nitrate leaching into ground and surface water, and recycles animal waste back into the farm. These benefits are counterbalanced by higher food costs for consumers and generally lower yields. Organic inputs are also agrochemicals. These are these are compounds that are used to control a particular pest or disease so they are still chemicals but the way these ones are composed or what what the compounds within them they are naturally occurring so they also dissipate much faster than synthetic agrochemicals so you also find that even when you when you look at the the acute effects of using the agro the organic inputs they are not evident. You don't get aspects of headaches, you don't get chest aches, you don't get those different aspects of it. Tom Thuondongo, a tea farmer in Limuru, Kiambu County, decided to try organic farming on fruits and vegetables using organic inputs, and he can confess an increase in the health of his crops as well as production by almost double. Actually apply um, with trench, we put it at the we, we, we apply it at the roots and the spray on the leaves and that we do every every, every week every week every seven days is what we've been applying this since we planted we planted uh, 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 this passion and now you can see the results you can see how how big the the the, 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 the passions are, are and so we are hoping that this passion we are hoping that we can do about seven passions uh, per, per kilo if we are able to do seven passions per kilo, I think it will have translated into something. Because of the size? Of because of the size. You see, the size and because the sales is kilo. Yeah. The, the, the fruits are sold in kilo. So even the farmer or even the consumer will have a benefit because the, 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 the fruit will be a big fruit and, and, and of course it will be, and they become also more nutritious. More, 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 more nutritious and it is absolutely organic. It is organic. We don't spray any chemical on them at all at all at all and we also are able to sell the uh, the, uh, the, the gooseberries to a few uh, a number of a number of a number of uh, green grocers in nairobi we pack them into into sachets and then we we we, we sell them and they, they they like the gooseberries you can see the size of the gooseberries and they are very tasty uh, we have got more than 200 farmers who have used our products uh, more than 70 of them are regularly using uh, we only had one complaint until now because the person was a telephone farmer. Mm -hmm. So, you see, if you're not on the farm, it will not grow. Yeah. Uh, in coffee, we had a challenge where the tree started to bend because there was too many fruits on it. Mm -hmm. So, the problem was reversed. 
Kilimo hai organic wants that just by physical observation it is highly unlikely that you can discern whether a product is organic. The best way to do that is look for the Kilimo high mark or ask the vendor who are their main suppliers. Since organic certification relies on traceability to guarantee the authenticity of the produce, vendors have to always know who and where their producers come from. Charge on your current bouquet and get upgraded to the next high bouquet for one month. Download Star Times on app for unlimited entertainment. Anytime, anywhere. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Mm. Colgate Herbal is formulated from a unique blend of natural herbs and is scientifically proven to strengthen teeth and keep gums healthy. Try Colgate Herbal, scientifically proven for strong teeth and healthy gums. Colgate Chaco, the charcoal toothpaste you can trust. I've got a plan to make sure I can weather any storm. No matter where my ambitions take me, ICEA Lion has a plan for everyone. ICEA Lion, what's your plan? I use normal detergent and bleach for washing. The detergent and bleach cleanless can leave behind yellowness, rust, and germs. Habix 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. And kills 99.9% .9 illness causing germs in your toilet, including the COVID-19 virus. This week on KTN Home. And home, your home of entertainment. From heart pounding action to tear jerking romance, you will never lose me, Paul Trades. From mind bending mysteries to side splitting comedies, is that blood? KTN Movie Experience, we have it all. Mystery, adrenaline, action. Nine seconds. Ah! Ah! 
Now double that. Welcome home. Charge on your current bouquet and get upgraded to the next high bouquet for one month. Download Star Times on app for unlimited entertainment. Anytime, anywhere. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Welcome back to Farm Kenya and we are talking matters to do with organic food markets and consumption and in studio I have Dennis Nda, co-founder of Organic Market, uh, Karen and Gregory Kimani who is the executive director of City Shamba. Gregory, uh, did you also land into organic farming? Um, situ what was the situation with your story? Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here. So uh, for me, for me, I'm a typical Nairobian, uh, brought and brought, uh, born and uh, bred here. So uh, we have, I have my extended family here, and uh, my grandmother, of course, used to do some kind of road fringe uh, farming. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, being small scale, uh, we I did not see her buying any kind of uh, fa synthetic fertilizers. We're just uh, looking, doing the farming, and I believe that this has been the norm on how our ancestors have been producing food. So you will do rotation farming or uh, integrating different types of crops uh, within the farm that will also uh, ensure that uh, the soils are healthy every time that you are going to plant. Yeah. So uh, after that, of course, again, uh, from one of the slums in Nairobi, uh, again, I can remember growing up, uh, food was not, uh, we could not really afford uh, three meals in a day. It was a challenge. So we, we experienced food insecurity and that was not an isolated case because I could see from my friends, neighbors, that was the same. We were not uh, food secure. So immediately after campus, we thought of how we can uh, integrate uh, agriculture within urban areas because here lack of money directly translates to lack of food mm -hmm. and uh, we researched on what is ailing our current food systems, uh, issues of food safety, uh, f food availability, how are people accessing it and uh, that's when we decided that we are going to get into uh, production of food okay. within the limited spaces we have but mm -hmm. uh, producing it in a manner that is very safe Okay. Uh, for human consumption that is not going really to compromise the health of the consumers. Okay. And that's when uh, uh, City Shamba was born. Okay. Uh, it is uh, spearheaded by uh, the youth of Eastlands. Mm -hmm. And we do organic farming. We've really benefited from the experience that we've had mm -hmm. and also gaining from the uh, knowledge, indigenous knowledge that uh, people have. Okay. So, yeah, so we just uh, do farming in small spaces just to ensure that also people in urban areas are contributing to the to the food system Definitely. but producing this food in a very uh, safe manner that uh, is taking care of the environment okay. uh, the planet and also the people All right. that are Definitely. consuming it that's yeah. incredible man uh turning the situation around you and uh sort of utilizing that not only as a motivation but also seeing the gaps mm -hmm. like we can do better with our small space what yes. can we do here mm -hmm. that's quite incredible dennis I, I i know yours was okay i need to eat organic uh there's no organic i'm gonna plant myself now you you've immersed you've started planting organic foods uh first of all the mindset you are going into vis-a-vis -vis the reality you know the way they say qua ground between it different yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you experience a similar situation um so when i was getting into this um i mean like i just went into production okay. and um you know 
good soils will always work magic mm -hmm. you know so the parcel of land that i had was was great you know it wasn't i mean like if you compare um conventional sort of like farming you will even see it's sort of like you're growing things on dust and this other soil you know it's just by looking at it touching smelling feeling it you can feel there's life there you know mm -hmm. um and and introducing the seeds or the seedlings into this there's something beautiful that works there but of course there's some science in this okay um because i mean you still have to race again as you know you're the mercy of the climate whether you know there's uh pests you know mm -hmm. uh there's your neighboring farmers you know you you're not in control in their way of production so there could be contamination you know i could be producing here organic my neighbor is over there they are conventional they're spraying so you can see yes. what's happening there so you need to figure out are you going to create a buffer you know around that um if it's issues around pests are you going to use uh biological pesticides or are you going to use other crops to control that mm -hmm. uh so these are things that i had to learn you know mm -hmm. so and then of course not doing monocropping because mm -hmm. that's another big enemy so i would i would segment you know in little portions mm -hmm. so it's like spinach is over there and in between spinach is let's say your skuma wiki there's you know spring onion and then there's herbs around it and um of course there's uh the biological pesticide there are companies that are producing uh biological um pesticides that are friendly mm -hmm. you know they're plant-based and there's there's no harm you know mm -hmm. so and in the process of doing that you know food was just coming and um, it was a lot mm -hmm. and just by eating from my farm i would feel an internal difference i would i was still looking frail but mm -hmm. i was feeling like i'm just becoming more alive yes and i would combine it with my medication and um you know uh, i was able to manage a lot of things just with right food production level mm -hmm. and then combining it with my medication and ju just being disciplined and i was regaining my health and wow. the food was a lot mm -hmm. so i started opening up my place on the weekends where neighbors would come and get this food mm -hmm. and at that moment there was a lady who was like instead of us coming here is there a way you could create a market where we could just come and access this so and at that point i was thinking i'm probably not the only one who's looking for this they are mm -hmm hundreds of other people that are looking for this yeah. so that's the point when the i saw that opportunity and i was like we're gonna go that direction wow yeah you decided now it's time to go to market and yes. sometimes we you can think there is no much demand maybe it's just for me mm. then you realize there's actually a whole lot of people looking for these opportunities correct and gregory even just uh, by your experience because you are innovating and you're doing urban farming in a sustainable manner in a clean manner uh, without using a lot of chemicals so purely organic uh, talk to me about first of all encouraging young people to join this project uh, how difficult or easy was it that is one and uh so far what transformation is that doing to the communities in eastlands especially yeah uh i think uh since we started we've seen a lot of transformation we started uh some years just before covid and uh so many people especially in urban areas and those who are living in these um underserved area or poor communities as we as i had uh, indicated uh they do manual jobs yeah so here if you don't really have that uh, money or purchasing power that means that maybe you might go to bed hungry and uh of course we know about the skyrocketing uh, unemployment rates here in kenya so youth are looking for things that they can uh clinch on and uh try to maybe earn a living from that but uh remember that also food is the most basic human need that um we all need we all have to eat uh, three times a day it doesn't really matter who you are you can be a doctor a news presenter but you still need to to eat so uh during covid maybe that is when it dawned on people so it gave us a silver lining to sell our story that uh, because there was a great disruption into the food system you remember during that time you would go to the supermarkets and the shelves were empty mm -hmm. people are going for food and uh, 
uh, tissue paper, I think. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> so, yeah, so the shelves are basically empty and uh, uh, that's when it dawned on people, yeah, do we really have the power to control if uh, we cannot uh, feed ourselves, if that food cannot come into, into the city or cannot find its way into our, uh, our, our tables, then what is left of us? And uh, these disruptions might happen any time. You remember when we have maybe violence, can be out of violence, and you might uh, lack something to eat. So that gave us a silver lining to sell uh, the story that we can start producing our own food. You don't have to be um, a career farmer. You can still be a doctor and yes. uh, have a small kitchen gardens. Okay. So uh, through also partners who we are working with, such as uh, APHRC, they are supporting youth also uh, to train them in uh, agribusiness and okay. also helping them start up some agribusiness uh, enterprises within these uh, areas. And uh, we are seeing that it is something that is working for okay. a lot of youth. Mm -hmm. We've already worked with uh, around 25 youth groups within Viwandani and Korokocho that okay. uh, we trained and also uh, capacity to build them to for them to start their own some their own agribusiness enterprises okay. and it has uh, worked a lot of wonders they've embraced it and uh, now they are producing food they're so, running with it yes yes that's yes. quite incredible uh, i mean dennis now you, you you have a market and one of the stories uh, actually we are seeing there is that it's very easy for people to slap their organic <laughs> and they wrap it in a foil and they say, this is organic. Yeah. Um, and now this brings in the market dynamics, especially matters to do with sourcing, mm. uh, proving that actually this was produced organically. Uh, talk to me about you now, you're running a market. It's not only you selling. Correct. Uh, a lot of people approaching it, they're like, I have yeah. some products I could also sell. Correct. Uh -huh. So, I mean, like... Um when we started the market, mm -hmm. um, it was just a few, you know, a handful of farmers, you know. And by then there was the belief that anything that's, that grows in Kenya is actually organic. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to say it's organic. There was that belief, mm -hmm. you know, or anything that's grown in the rural setup is actually organic. Mm -hmm. But that, that wasn't the case, you know. And uh, that was, was and is still actually driven by consumers. So... Actually, the, one of the biggest problems that we have in the entire movement is the consumers. It's actually not the producers. Mm -hmm. Because what, what happens is that when you look at the behavior and the trends, when a consumer goes to buy, they're looking for particular aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And these aesthetics are only achieved mainly through conventional farming. So a consumer puts that pressure to the retailer or the kiosk owner or store owner. And then now the store owner has the standard defined by the consumer. Mm. So the cucumbers must look like this, the tomato must be like this, the onion must be like this. Where do you achieve that? You achieve that through conventional farming, mm. the uniformity. Mm -hmm. If you are inorganic, there's all irregular shapes and design the same crop. One tomato could be like this, another one could be like this. One is eaten by, is, has some blemish over here. It doesn't meet the aesthetics. And when you have it, sometimes they're snails, they're bags, and all that. Mm. And consumers don't want that. Okay. They see that, they're like, uh-uh. Mm. So, and then now, if this is what the consumers want, and the retailers want to stock that, the pressure goes back to the, the producer. producer. And then the producer will have to do what is required to have this so that now the retailer can take that. Mm. Yes. So, one of the things, even identical twins are actually not identical. That's true. So... At the production level, there are things you can use visually, mm -hmm. but it's also very difficult. Mm -hmm. So that's why there has to be a deeper connection between you and the food. Mm -hmm. You need to know where is my food coming from? Who's producing it? Mm -hmm. Can I go to their farm? You know, um, give me the story. Who's behind their selling? Mm -hmm. So in the markets, one of the things that we do, the actual producer is the seller. Okay. So there's no middleman. Mm -hmm. So and that's why in the weekly operations whoever is behind the table is the one who produced the food mm -hmm. and then after the weekend they go back to their farm and do whatever they have to do now before you can join the market you of course you do whatever applications uh we have to come to your farm so you have to tell us where is your farm located we'll have to visit your farm 
before we can have any conversation. Mm -hmm. So just by, so when they call or send an email or whatever and say, where's your farm? A huge percentage of the people that make the inquiry, as soon as I drop the issue of visiting the farm, they never call again. <laughs> what percentage? Like almost 80, 90? Almost 90%. Whoa. Yes. And then now the second step, the ones that are open, they're genuine, they're doing a good job, will say, my farm is at XYZ place, mm. could you come? Mm. So what we do, we involve an organic agronomist who will accompany us to the farm, mm. and then we would check. So there are a number of things that we check, from soil fertility, how do you deal with your pests, uh, what is the neighboring surrounding uh, of the other producers, issues around water. Mm -hmm. So all these things, we look at them. And sometimes, you know, you can't fool people. Uh, if someone is lying, you know, you're moving around, you could see a bottle of <laughs> a synthetic thing, you could see a sack of whatever, you know. Yeah. So we, sometimes I prefer yes. a conventional farmer mm -hmm. who generally wants to transition mm -hmm. to becoming an organic farmer. Okay. Because what happens, it's very difficult to find someone who straight goes into organic. But there's a bunch of producers who are conventional that want to transition to organic. So we can have that conversation mm -hmm. of changing. It's like a drug addict, you know? Yeah. yeah. You stop pole pole, you know, mm -hmm. and you start draw. sobering slowly, yes. slowly. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather eat 99% conventional and 1% organic. Mm -hmm. And the same farmer will do 2%, 3%. When you look at the next couple of years, three, four, five years, the operations have turned into organic. Oh. Uh, the issue around certification, I would admit it's not it's not clean in this country mm. what i've experienced is as long as a farmer pays for certification they'll get a certificate so we had engaged we, we've, we've engaged a number of certifiers before mm. and what happened any producer who paid for certification automatically got a certificate and we kept questioning ourselves as market organizers we're not getting any feedback around a particular farm didn't qualify because mm -hmm. so for them they treat it as a pure business model where they just want farmers and they want to give them a certificate. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's deeper than that. So we had to change that and say, okay, the market management will be involved in that process. An organic agronomist who's independent will be involved in that process. Yes. Same producers in that setting of market are also involved. So if we, we are going to know as farm, mm -hmm. we'll declare we're going to know as farm, the market team will go there, the, uh, the organic agronomist, and your fellow farmers will be there to see what you're doing. Right. So in that case, we tend to find better results. Mm -hmm. And also, it's open to our consumers that they can visit any farm. Anyone you're buying from, if you want to go to their farm, the farmer needs to allow you and should allow you to go to their farm and see how the production happens. Wow. Yeah. Accountability yeah. Yeah. throughout the whole system. Correct. Because, uh, you know, it, in Kenya we say it doesn't hurt to try. You know, mm -hmm. I can call and say, hey, I'm supplying. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. you ask, where is your farm? I was like, oh yeah. man, <laughs> now it's just a middleman trying to search for mm -hmm. Narok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is quite interesting. Gregory, mm -hmm. I, I mean, since the way uh, you guys formatted the initial project, mm -hmm. it was South Sustainability. Mm -hmm. If you go out, mm -hmm. you are from hustling, you haven't met a Bob. Mm -hmm. You still have your skumas you can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, eat something from it. Mm -hmm. um, now commercialization, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. being able, because now we see there is demand. Yeah. I mean, by the fact that people want to come and tag themselves as, as organic producers, it mm -hmm. means there is a demand. Mm -hmm. So how did City Shamba manage to transition? Have you gone... Uh, commercial and mm -hmm. how have you avoided some of these challenges that Dennis is mentioning? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I will talk about the urban food system mm -hmm. uh, because it is unique in a certain way. Uh, here space is a limiting factor, a major limiting factor. So when you want to go into commercial production, you have to think of ways of how you want to do that so that you can make sense, economic sense of uh, the activities that you are doing. So for us uh, as City Shamba, uh, we identified that uh, information and lack of skills and knowledge is also another limit a major limiting factor actually so for people who grew up maybe in urban areas we were taught that uh, these are areas where you come to look for white collar jobs mm -hmm. and agriculture is for the old people and uh, for the rural people so we'll have to wait for them to feed us so for us we came up with a, a 
quite a different model where we are focusing on capacity development and training of people such that if you have a household if you have, if you have an institution such as school you can produce food primarily for own or household uh, consumption so not really producing it uh, for for commercial uh, uh, commercial purposes. benefit, yeah, or purposes. So, but that has really grown because uh, since we started, we've made uh, quite a number of uh, gardens, mm -hmm. upwards of 2,300, and these people are already producing surplus. Okay. So after they've already fed themselves, now mm -hmm. they are producing surplus, and that is now where we need to uh, look for markets for them, and that's where now organic farmers market come in. Mm -hmm. We are planning to have a market maybe for the Eastlands, for those who are producing Eastlands, so that we can aggregate these uh, 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 pro these produce or yields mm -hmm. that are in excess from the farmers who are doing that. Okay. So for us, uh, we've set up a, an urban agriculture resource and information center, which has uh, different uh, technologies that are ideal and appropriate for urban urban communities, yeah. Okay. And uh, we do target uh, from primary schools, and it's a good thing that uh, also the government uh, introduced CBC, okay. where these uh, pupils and students are able to learn practically on how they can produce uh, uh, food. Okay. Where does the food come from? How does a seedling, a skumawiki or a spinach seedling look like? Okay. Because they would only find them in the supermarket shelves. Okay. So it's uh, very practical, the CBC, and it's a, it's a very nice curriculum. At City Shamba, we have all the textbooks, uh, the, the whole curriculum from grade four to grade eight. Okay. And uh, it's a requirement that they have to visit a farm. Oh. So that is also one of the uh, revenue streams that uh, we are using whereby uh, schools from urban areas come to the to the farm and the students are able to learn experientially. Okay. They're able to be taken around the farm and uh, shown different ways of producing food and it's good that also for the, the text in this uh, curriculum is really advocating for organic farming and organic uh, food production. They're advocating for agroecology and uh, basic principles such as agroforestry. Mm. So these are the things that they come and uh, interact with experientially on okay. the ground. We Definitely. also work, uh, pass this information uh, to people visit the farm and they are able to see. Oh. Uh, we also work with uh, you and women groups who are interested in starting some agribusiness enterprises and we are able to take them through our theoretical curriculum okay. in class mm -hmm. and then they are able to go to the farm and we teach them on how they can grow crops um, regeneratively, how okay. they can feed the soil, we start with their soil health. So they I, I really like that, mm -hmm. that um, it is sort of in term, how can I call it? It's everyone's business, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah. Uh, in the academic academia, starting young, um, at the same time, strengthening and streamlining the markets, mm -hmm. um, doing it properly. Mm -hmm. There is also the consumption end of things, mm -hmm. changing the mindset when it comes to organic products. Yeah. So you not necessarily expect, you know, this mass produce uh, copy and paste mm -hmm. uh, product yeah. if at all you are going uh, mm -hmm. organic. And I think this is a good effort that we're making. We have less than a minute left, okay. Dennis. Mm -hmm. um, I know what the future holds. Yeah. I don't know whether we have a silver bullet to address some of the challenges that you noted. I know internally you're Correct. innovating as a market, yeah. but from a policy perspective, mm -hmm. might there be critical interventions briefly that can change organic farming in this country? Yes, uh, at the policy level, there's been a lot of conversation and discussion around this, but the implementation has been the problem, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and I think it's just for obvious reasons, you know, and that's why even, you know, be it in politics or whatever, issues around food are never discussed in this country, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess because seed business is big business, agrochemical business is massive business. So there's, there's selfishness when we talk about that. Mm. But again, not to condemn the agrochemical companies. I think the problem is they need to educate the farmers a lot and the farmers need to invest in the knowledge. Mm. This, when you look at it deeper, there's actually no problem at all. Okay. It's just there's a lot of indiscipline mm. when it comes to application and the use of these chemicals in production. Okay. So if, if they were disciplined and you know, they follow the procedure and whatever, 
things would be way better right. you know so but the business of you know i didn't follow the procedure harvest is almost ready the pest is over there i spray today tomorrow i take it to the market and you know be, yes, it, yes. be it your chicken you'll still give antibiotics and tomorrow slaughter the chicken bring the eggs or inject the animal with the antibiotic today tomorrow you you're milking you can't pour that milk and you take it to the same depot where other people done a good. so there's a lot of indiscipline when it okay. comes to food production mm -hmm. so the standards and checks you know are critical but again even when you look for instance with the organic right now i can't go to kenya bureau of standards with that name mm -hmm. they don't recognize it mm -hmm. yeah they, they'll be like no you have to avoid that you can't even include it in your packaging so it's, it's quite an interesting conversation because wow. the standards legally okay. have not been All defined right. and approved. Definitely. Great. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. um, we have to take a break. Um, and actually after the break, we are having, it's called brown? We're going to have sourdough bread. Sourdough bread. Yes. Right after the break. Remember, this is the Farm Kenya show. And after we have that sourdough bread, I hope that... Uh, you will have an interactive session and see how you can actually bring organic food making and consumption into your very own household with very simple, simple steps. Stay tuned. It is the Farm Kenya Show. And thank you very much to my guest, Dennis Ndai, co-founder of Organic Markets, Karen, and Gregory Kimani, executive director, City Shamba. Thank you so much. That was nice, man. Thank you, Noah. You guys are dope. Asante, man. <laughs> In your current bouquet and get upgraded to the next high bouquet for one month. Download Star Times on app for unlimited entertainment. Anytime, anywhere. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. I use normal detergent and bleach for washing. The detergent and bleach cleanless can leave behind yellowness, rust, and germs. Hapix 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. And kills 99.9% .9 illness causing germs in your toilet, including the COVID-19 virus. Story uni guza kama story ya mtoto. Babaki akona special needs, she's disabled. Mama aliaga when she was still young. Anuachua shoshua ndio kiagiva. Hakuna pesa. La kumpela kwa hospitali and she's sick. Sasa mi niko na ishi da ya mgu. Nili, nili, dali wana, nikiwa mdogo. Sasa kama mi nikijana hivi, niko nyumbani. Uwe, uwe, jana wenzangu ngini wanafanya kazi, mi niko nyumbani. Njoo si raisi. Si raisi. Hata watoto wana, wakiniona wana toroka. Good people, I request you. Let's share this pain. We have done this before. And we will pull this together. Ile kitugo konayo. Be a blessing. What uplifting content without a dose of exciting adventure into the world of lifestyle? Strap into What's Your Story? That is how I first came to Nairobi in a hustle. In my story for another day. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's for another but day. But that's how I first came to Nairobi in a hustle. Calling all foodies. Indulge your taste buds with Tupike. A delightful journey into the world of mouth-watering recipes and culinary delights that will inspire the whole family to get creative in the kitchen. Jake cleans and kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs and COVID-19 in your home. Jake. 
your family's guardian against germs and COVID-19. Ethan! Mommy! Mommy! Ethan! From the depths of heartache to the heights of happiness, lives intertwine in ways you never imagined. That's how I look at it, being the mother of Hymas children. Secrets are revealed, alliances are tested. It was your husband who killed my daughter! Mommy! Mommy! And true love faces its biggest challenges. You know what? This is your fault! I warned you! Love, betrayal and endless suspense thrive in the world of soap operas at KTN Home. Tune in. I saw the killer bride. Y you meet the ghost? Charge on your current bouquet and get upgraded to the next high bouquet for one month. Download Star Times on app for unlimited entertainment. Anytime, anywhere. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. All right, it is said that man does not live by bread alone. But if you have actually this kind of bread, then you'll realize there is another level of breading in this country right now. <laughs> actually, welcome back to From Kenya Show. Right now, I'm joined by Chef Alfonso Njuguna, yeah. all the way from Rosalfo Bakery. And we have a lot of bread here, Chef. Yes. Uh, uh, it looks like normal bread uh, that I'll buy in the supermarket. Is it any different, sir? Yeah, there is much different because this bread doesn't have uh, uh, commercial yeast. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have adjectives. It doesn't have uh, any chemical stabilizer. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural bread. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, uh, people say it's a traditional way of baking bread because it's made through fermentation process, mm -hmm. which takes maybe 16 to 19 hours. Yes. So it's a long... 16 to 19 hours? Yeah, it's a long process. Yeah. How about the normal bread takes how long? The normal bread can take even 30 to 45 minutes. 30 to 45 minutes, but yes. this one 16 to 19 hours? Of course, yes. Wow. Yes. Why should somebody go to such lengths to make bread? Because when making bread, you want to get uh, the, the benefit of, of what is the bread. Mm -hmm. One, when uh, the bread is developing, mm -hmm. because this is made through fermentation, mm -hmm. it's the natural yeast, you correct that natural yeast, and by fermenting the bread, then the good bacteria mm -hmm. also have a cap cap capacity mm -hmm. of developing other minerals like uh, zinc, Okay. magnesium, mm -hmm. which is easily also absorbed into your blood system uh -huh. and you, you become healthy. Uh -huh. So it's a life bread, as is, you can say. It's, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, and not to, uh, you know, water down, because majority of the country, mm -hmm. we consume the normal bread that you're yes. used to. Yes. I know some of us pick... Uh, between white and brown, we choose brown because we feel a hey, brown might be a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. But I'm told it's just the same thing. In terms of uh, nutrition, yeah, yeah? Yes. you say this one, the way it's fermented, mm -hmm. it produces the zinc, it makes you a little bit uh, easier to, to absorb in the system? Yes, mm -hmm. also, also fermented bread or sourdough bread is very comfortable in your stomach because it doesn't cause any broting in the stomach. Mm -hmm. So anybody can consume the sourdough bread okay. and you feel very comfortable mm -hmm. uh, without having brought in the stomach, barbara, or whatever. This is the traditional way of making bread. Yeah, this so, is the traditional way mm -hmm. of making bread. Mm -hmm. Maybe 6,000 years back. 6,000 years? Yes. That's because a, this mm -hmm. a, if you go to the Bible, 
read something like riven bread mm -hmm. and riven bread. Yes. But this one is riven bread uh -huh. because it ko na chachu. Hii ni mkati ambao iko na chachu. Okay. Yes. That's incredible. You know, I'm reminded of that story, Chef. Yes. Um, of uh, when Joseph was in prison. Yes. <laughs> and there was the baker and there was the the guy who, who used to make the drinks. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, they hung the baker. I don't know why. Yeah. Yes. But uh, now, you want to make this at home. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Um, especially for somebody who wants to adopt a healthier bread. Yes. How difficult, how hard, first of all, where do you source these ingredients? Uh, the first thing, the most important thing is to have what we call the starter. Mm -hmm. The starter is the mother of the bread. Mm -hmm. The starter takes almost one week to make mm -hmm. because it's a process where you ferment that small bread. You see? Mm -hmm. the, no, the, small, uh, the dough, mm -hmm. you, you ferment it for one week. And then by the time you see it start bubbling up, that's when you can make your bread. Okay. So from there, you start now feeding that uh, small thing and keeping it, making sure that it doesn't die. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, uh, it, it seems very technical. It's a, it's a technical because it's a culture. It's just the way you can, uh, can ferment milk. Mm -hmm. It's the way you can ferment uh, so many things. Mm -hmm. So when you collect that natural bacteria, mm, yes. which is in the air, mm -hmm. which is the uh, same as the... And then you start keeping it. Yes. You have to keep in on feeding it also. Okay. Yeah. Now this one takes a week to, to make. And the other one... Uh... No, after one week, mm -hmm. now it's, it's when you, you start now making uh, 16 to 19 hours. 16 to 19 hours. As, as long as you keep your starter mm -hmm. alive. Yes. But uh, it's very easy even for the people in the rural area. Even mm -hmm. if here in Kenya we, it's not common. But other places like in Europe or Germany is very common. People mm -hmm. make their own bread. Okay. Because the idea, they, for them they don't keep bread in the stores or in the supermarkets. Eh? Mm -hmm. But here we are used to commercial because uh, somebody came and maybe lied to us. Is, it's a good bread and they want to make money very fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, as Dennis has said. Yeah. So because of wanting to make money fast and so everything is spoiled on that okay. process. All right. So uh, here I see quite a number of ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, once you've, you've taken the 16 to 19 hours, yeah. this is the final product that you get. This is the final product that I know we get. Mm -hmm. like, uh, Okay. Like today, today, oh. today, I came with the only. You have to put on gloves. Is it okay if I also get a piece? Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Let me see this. Yeah. But when you're in a bakery, you know, it's not a, it's not a must. Oh. Okay. Because in the bakery, you have to be cream. Yeah. So the first bread is like this one. This one. This one I call it plain sourdough. Plain sourdough. Plain. It's just plain. Oh, plain. Yeah. Okay. Plain mm -hmm. sourdough. It's just uh, white flour mixed with the whole meal flour. Mm -hmm. the that is plain. That's plain sourdough. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. This one we call it. This is the whole meal. Mm -hmm. The whole meal sourdough. Okay. It is hundred percent whole meal. But it's a sourdough. Okay. What does that mean, that whole meal? This is like, uh, like when we are saying, uh, whole meal means the grain is, is grinded, mm -hmm. nothing is removed. It's not sieved. Okay. It's, it's totally... That means all the nutrients that... All the nutrients and mm -hmm. everything. Yes. But this one, but... Uh, when you are making hormone, you have to make to, to note that uh, uh, the gluten is less. But when you, a white flour, mm -hmm. which is a bit, you see, the gluten is very high. Okay. Yes. Ah, and I've seen a lot of people mm -hmm. saying they want uh, gluten-free meals. The, the gluten-free meals mm -hmm. is not wheat. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 
is the flour made from maybe other like maize flour, is gluten free, okay. cassava, mm -hmm. or uh, buckwheat, to serve the, the grain which uh, don't have gluten. Okay. Yes. But wheat, it has gluten, yeah. but when it is whole, ground as a whole, yes. then it Gr has less. Uh, Yes, because, because of the grains. Oh, okay. Because of the grains. Ah, yes. Lovely. Then uh, there is this one which is uh, uh, decorated. This one is, I call it uh, seeded bread. Mm -hmm. It's a healthy bread. Mm -hmm. Very nutritious also. Uh, because it has uh, sunflower seeds and uh, sesame seeds and also coated with oats. Okay. Yeah, so it's... Uh, health bread and uh, you know is the important of eating grains sunflower when it's whole so when you are eating this bread you chew it and you'll feel there's sunflower okay there is uh, sesame seeds and then so it's uh, technically it is sweeter yeah it's healthy no it's not sweet because we don't use uh, sugar no in terms of yeah, you know uh, yes. uh, in the mouth yeah, since it has sesame it's, you know in, enjoy in sesame. The mouth, yes. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. actually even when you are eating the bread mm -hmm. those who are good in tasting like chefs mm -hmm. you will notice that you can feel as if there is sugar in the bread mm -hmm. but actually it's not it's because of the bacteria now because the bacteria feed on starch on sugar okay and it's breaking it down mm. yeah so that That's gives an impression of sugar, but it's... Yeah, you feel that expression that it's is sugar, but it's nothing. That's wow. why this bread is fair, very healthy. Wow, that's incredible. How long have you been baking, sir? For now, I have been baking for almost 10 years. 10 years? Yes. Even if my bakery now is about two years old. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. So I have been baking somewhere else in Nakuru. Oh, yes. you're in Akuru. You are also still doing uh, sourdough. sourdough. Yes, yes. That's your specialization. Yes, I was still doing sourdough. Then. Okay. Yes. Ah, that's incredible. Before we go to the specifics, mm -hmm. uh, Chef, talk to me about uh, how much demand mm -hmm. are Kenyans embracing uh, this sourdough bread? Are uh, more people asking, Chef, where can I get bread tomorrow? I want that actually, sourdough. Actually, what I can say, the the kenyans are not used to sourdough bread mm -hmm. it's something new mm -hmm. but uh, i can see they are a good trade of people because in the in the baker i still get orders from also africans mm -hmm. in fact there is uh, two or three africans who can who can do without sourdough they, well it's my sourdough mm -hmm. yes but uh, it's very common with white mm -hmm. but uh, uh but like now this baker, this side of mine, mm -hmm. more people are coming, even the white, they are coming to like my sourdough mm -hmm. because there is no yeast in it. Okay. There are some people like who are doing sourdough, if you go to the supermarket, mm -hmm. like now you can get sourdough but it's not sourdough. Oh, so you're saying like fake fertilizer now we are talking fake sourdough. Of course, yes, there is. Hey. What you do is, mm -hmm. uh, you put yeast, and then you take that uh, riven fermentation, mm -hmm. and then you mix with it, so that uh, when people are eating, they feel the flavor mm -hmm. of sourdough, mm -hmm. and they think it's sourdough, but it's, it's not. Wow. So, uh, as, as, as a consumer, especially if I've just been convinced by Chef Alfonso, mm -hmm. that from today, I, as Noah Kipkimboy, I'll be taking sourdough alone. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the supermarket, I find the counterfeit one. Can consumers tell the legit one from a non-legit one? If you are not used to sourdough bread, mm -hmm. it's not easy to know. But if I myself, I go and I taste it, I can tell. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as I can say, it's good mm -hmm. to know where your sourdough bread is coming from. Mm -hmm. So that they tell you whether it's hybrid, Actually, they call it hybrid mm -hmm. because they don't want to wait such a long, you see? Yes. If you, like now, if you want to bread, I will tell you, uh, you want to bread, you have ordered now, mm -hmm. wait it until tomorrow evening. 
till tomorrow evening. Yes. Your orders come 24 yes. hours yes. earlier. Yes. yes. That's quite incredible, and I'm yes. glad you said uh, there yes. is hybrid bread. You know, majority of people didn't <laughs> know there is hybrid bread. No, there bread. is hybrid uh, <laughs> yes. sourdough also in the supermarket. Yes. So uh -huh. that's why you advise, check where the bread is coming from, mm -hmm. taste the bread, the real bread, Yes. and uh, so that you can know what is you are really eating. Okay. Yes. And you know, today we are still talking on matters uh, organic foods. Yes. So you, first of all, from the best uh, mm. on your bread, you've gotten it right. You've yes. gotten sourdough, yes. which is very organic, very nice, does yeah. not cause a lot of problems yeah. in your stomach. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even the flour, yes. Even the flour, you have also to check where are you getting your flour from. Mm -hmm. Like my flour comes from Nakuru. There is a German who mills flour. It's called Martin. It's a German, mm -hmm. and he used stone ground mill. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like this flour is milled through stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's not like uh, the faster. The machines. The, no, this yeah. one is stone. Yeah, it's stone, and mm -hmm. uh, they normally say when you are milling your flour with the this machine, this. Uh, industrials. Yes. The lawless sometimes they become very hot mm -hmm. and they sometimes they keep even uh, the nutrients. The nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. And yeah. All those processes. So yeah. where you're sourcing your ingredients from is very important. Yeah, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Also this like uh, like now if you try to make sourdough with the the flour you buy from the supermarket, the breached one, mm -hmm. it won't work very well. Yeah. It won't work. So I have to source my flour from Nakuru? You have to source, and if you have to go, you have to bake as flour, you have to tell them the flour, exactly flour that you need, because it's not supposed to be breached. Okay. Immediately it is breached. Okay. Uh, and you try to make sourdough bread, the, the bacteria, remember these are very sensitive also bacteria. Bacteria oh. that are sensitive. Okay. They will also react. Oh, I see that. Now, let's go to the sandwich because we want to eat yeah. a, a organic meal. Yeah. yeah? Yes. So you have sourdough bread. Uh, I see as part of the sandwich. Yes. Uh, first of all, you've cut quite a couple of them. Yes. Um, maybe we can start. I, let, me, let me just wear my, my hands here. And um, may I call also on my... Other guests, uh, Dennis, Greg, uh, you guys can come over. <laughs> Let us give this sandwich a try. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, what is what is here? Is this conventional sandwich or what exactly? What I have tried to uh, to demonstrate is just a simple sandwich. Uh -huh. We can call it maybe uh, vegetarians or whatever. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, it's just simple oh. at home mm -hmm. yes. because uh, sourdough bread, you can use sourdough bread with so many things. Yes. You can use it even as a complete meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, when you come to like in the baker, when we, we are going to make it very good, mm -hmm. where you can have it with uh, even eggs, you can come and you fry with the egg, you mm -hmm. can have bacon, you can have soup, mm -hmm. but uh, sourdough, you can make it as a full meal. Okay. Complete meal because the bread is heavy. Okay. This bread, when it's uh, before baking, is one kg. So you can imagine a one kg with the yeast, it can be the whole of this table. Exactly. So this bread is compact and uh, it's full. It's, it's legit. Yeah, it's satisfying. Ah, beautiful. So we want to give it a try, and yeah. even as uh, we give it a try, yeah. uh, Dennis, yep. you, you know you, you, you're part of the organic yeah. market movement, Correct. Um, and this is now value addition. Mm -hmm. um, how much value addition is it being embraced in organic markets? How much mm -hmm. are we seeing of maybe yeah. cooked products uh, being... So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the areas that we've just seen like... Mm -hmm massive trajectory yes actually have more value addition vendors mm. in the market than actual farmers okay but in terms of definition of a farmer's market mm -hmm. alphonse in real sense mm -hmm. should actually transition and become a full farmer mm -hmm. so global definition mm -hmm. 
for Alphonse to sell into the organic farmer's market or any farmer's market, he needs to grow the grain, mm -hmm. he needs to make the flour, and he needs to bake the bread. Okay. So, and then we will recognize him as a farmer. Okay. Uh, and if he can't grow the uh, wheat and uh, make the flour, then he needs to source from people in the network. Okay. Yes. Ah, that's incredible. Yes. Ah, I, I really like that, mm. that... Um, there is there is room for growth and even you give people ideas correct to be able to okay i can go also into production mm. uh, however small i start yeah. but there is that farm to plate element correct. of it which is quite mm. interesting uh, I, I'm, I'm being told our time is run, running out i know uh, my friend Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Greg, uh, Gregory, mm -hmm. just just briefly, you can take this microphone. Uh, oh, oh, he's mic. Oh, you yeah. oh, you already mic. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I like that. Uh, so, I see here we have quite an interesting palette of. We have some tomatoes. We have onions. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. you as one of the leaders, especially amongst young people. Mm -hmm. uh, briefly, talk to me about uh, the issue of uh, young people taking up feeding healthy. Uh, is it a necessity that we need to put more emphasis on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, right now, as we had said, uh, people are looking into what they're eating mm -hmm. because you find that even people as young as uh, below 30 years are being at attacked by these uh, uh, non-communicable uh, diseases. Yeah. Lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle diseases, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that is uh, okay. majorly contributed with what we are eating. Uh -huh. So, people are really looking into what they are eating, doing okay. some uh, exercises. And uh, it's high time now we check on our diet uh -huh. uh, and we produce uh, what we are eating. I always say that uh, if you are not producing your, your own food, you do not have uh, control, you do not have the power of what you eat. You will wait for someone else. Someone else is holding that power. Okay. If you are waiting for the government to bring the fake fertilizers for you, then you are doomed, yeah? <laughs> so okay. it's upon you to uh, look for ways on how you are going to uh, produce food okay. that you, can, you are sure of because uh, the, the issue is about control. The issue is about the power. So okay. young people need to take back the power to decide on the type of food they want to eat, how it is going to be grown and how it is going to be produced. Beautiful. Yes. Chef. No, before we eat, yeah. they say... Mm -hmm. If you know how it's produced, it resonates well on the plate. <laughs> now we know how yes. sourdough yes. is, is yes. made and yes. it comes from uh, yeah. the German in Nyakuru. <laughs> now we can, we can take confidently. Yeah. Uh, chef, is it okay if I we yes, uh, yes, okay. pick a piece? Okay. Pick, pick, pick a piece. Come Sour. on, guys. Let us yeah. have a piece. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much. Banana. And even cheers. as... Uh, oh, cheers. Cheers to the yes. sandwich. Thank you. Chef also chef picked something, yeah. man. It's yours. All right, this is sourdough bread. I want to give it a try. Uh -huh. mm. Chef, you see this? This is what I was talking about. This is, this is the goal. Mm? We need to, mm, these flavors are crazy, man. Mm. This is an easy way to make. And you don't need to go look for so many things. Mm. Very nice. This is the way to live. Mm. From farm you know, to fork. Even the farm to fork. Mm -hmm. And avocado. The avocado is slapping differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. As it slaps, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's some <laughs> feedback here. Okay? Um, my name is Onyango from Kakamega. Thanks for bringing in Dennis and Gregory. Their stories are really inspirational. Thank you very much, Onyango, for tuning in. Um, hi, KTN. Please ask the guests what uh, keeps them going as using inorganic fertilizers is somehow more profitable. Of course, the, the issue you raised, uh, the price that we pay in terms of commercialization. Hi, Noah, today's show, uh, why should we move from inorganic farming to embrace organic farming? Uh, Harry from Siokimau, I think we've made a case it's healthier, uh, it's more sustainable, which is a good thing, uh, especially for on-source production. The insights shared have experienced uh, by experienced panelists have given me uh, the strength to not uh, actually not be afraid to start organic business. I'm Chalo from Kitui and um, Sam Old watching you live, uh, the same old Dennis, eloquent and to the point, kudos. Asanteni sana. Gentlemen, I really appreciate. Thank you very much for making time to be part of the Farm Kenya show. And thank you, Chef Alfonso, for this wonderful sandwich. And our viewers, 
If I had the power, I'd get you a sandwich home. But since I don't have that power, thank you very much for being part of this program. Until next time, remember, it's Farm Kenya Show. I'm Noah Kipkin Boy, and we are sandwiching away. Thank you. Wow, this is amazing. Huh?